Hello again, Des Asante here from the Tech News Academy with another MixLessons.com video quick tip. Uh, this one I just wanted to give a very brief insight into some very basic studio acoustics best practices. Um, dealing primarily with what we call first order reflections, which is in my opinion, and I am not an expert uh, acoustician by the way, but in my experience it seems to be the place to begin in a small studio room like most of us I'm sure are working out of. So what is a first order reflection? Basically what we're dealing with is is when a sound comes out of your studio monitor, it hits your ear, that's the direct signal. It also spreads out in various directions and hits whatever reflective surfaces are around, reflects off of those surfaces, and then hits your ear again a split second later than the direct signal. That would be that first order reflection. The first reflection off the nearest um, reflective surface and when it hits your ear and the time difference between that and the direct signal will give you some sort of phase cancellation, oddly enough, and, uh, and it will skew the way in which you're hearing. So in, the, the bottom line is, is that what you're hearing will not necessarily be the truth. Certain frequencies will get cancelled out, certain frequencies may even get accentuated based on the dimensions of your room and so forth. So let's have a quick look at what a first order reflection is. Um, so this is a, a quick simple diagram of what I'm trying to describe. There's the sound source, there's the listener, there's the direct sound. That direct sound also hits the a reflective surface and comes back to the ear a little bit later. What we want to do is apply absorption so that those reflections get absorbed and don't make it back to the ear so that what you're hearing is more of a truthful event as to what is actually uh, creating the sound in, in our mix rooms, of course, that's our studio monitors, okay? So w this is another quick diagram as to the basic positions you want to place absorption in your studio to get the best uh, first order reflection absorption uh, to avoid some of the issues that can crop up. So here's your mix position, your studio monitors here. You're definitely going to want to apply some treatment behind the monitors and a good way to find out where that first reflection point is, is if you have somebody hold a mirror against the back wall in your studio and to move it against the wall, slide it around until you can see the back of your speaker monitor in the mirror. That would be the direct reflection point and that would be a first place to treat. Do the same on the opposite side as well. Uh, something in the middle as is indicated in the diagram certainly wouldn't hurt either. Um, also to the left and right of you, uh, of your listening position, uh, are going to be reflective points as well and you're going to want to treat there. At the back of the room as well, you can treat with absorption or a combination of absorption and diffusion. Now diffusion is normally a harder surface um, and it's normally designed to scatter the sound and in this previous image you can see a bit of that. So a hard uneven surface is designed to scatter the sound in multiple directions so that it doesn't reflect directly back to the uh, to your ear okay so a combination of diffusion and absorption in the back wall is a pretty common practice um, uh, in, in, at a certain point in history it was uh, the the best practice to put absorption everywhere people started to realize that the room sounded very dead and lifeless uh, and it became a little bit more difficult to get a proper mix so a little bit of diffusion was incorporated back in so that you're still keeping a little bit of life in the room but you're absorbing most of the problem areas and then from there if you want to or feel the need to you can further treat the room with bass trapping bottom end frequencies are oftentimes very difficult to treat for especially in small spaces but some angular bass traps in the corner so that they don't take up too much of your um, of your uh, floor space is a good place to begin and with this simple diagram here if you've got a couple hundred bucks to spend on some foam or if you can find some DIY solutions to uh, to do this you'd be a heck of a, a good start into a decently sounding room the one other thing that I forgot to point out is uh, uh, is a ceiling absorber above you as another primary reflective point. So if you can hang something absorptive above you, directly above the listening position in the speaker monitors, um, you'll also be curing some of the problems that small rooms have, okay? So that's a, just a quick primer into very basic studio acoustics. A lot of times people ask me, where do I start? And like I say, I'm not an acoustician, but this is what I've done in my space and it seems to be rather effective. It's certainly a noticeable difference by far, far more noticeable than any gear, any a speaker monitor upgrade or anything like that that I've uh, that I've done this was very very noticeable and helpful okay so hopefully that helps you a little bit and we will see you on the next quick tip